What's going on lucky ones? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are bringing back one of the most highly requested series on our channels, How to Raise Your KD. Now this is like a video you've never seen before unless you watched it on my channel. But basically what that is, if it's your first time watching, I hop in a game of Warzone and as I'm playing, going for like a 30, 40 bomb or whatever the case may be, I'm giving you guys live commentary over what I'm doing and educational tips to help improve your game of Warzone. Now to add a little bit of twist, I thought it'd be interesting to change up the guns I use so you don't see me using the same guns every time because not everyone's going to use the guns that I you. So in this video, man, we're going to be seeing me use a sniper and a bullfrog. And the real unique thing about this series on our channel, man, it's not like your regular tips and tricks you'll see on TikTok or YouTube. It's very situational based. And basically what I'm doing is I'm showing you guys my play style, why I play a certain way, and how to increase your personal record in Warzone, kill record specifically. If you guys learned anything, man, make sure you guys leave a like and sub if you're not subbed already. And I hopefully you guys enjoy the video. All right, guys, so if you guys are new to the channel, man, these how-to videos work. I'm going to be talking over my gameplay, not letting it pause too much, but just giving you guys what's going on through my mind process, why I'm taking these, and hopefully giving you guys some tips and tricks along the way now we're talking about landing a super story now my personal favorite spot to go super story when it's a hot drop like this where it's a direct push down low you're not popping parachute you don't have to pop repop you don't need a poppy parachute right away and look around and try to get a pick out the air in fact you're probably going to lose more opportunity of getting kills than just getting one out the air i guess it's cool and all but like getting one kill out there versus getting maybe two or three off rip based on how fast you can land is more important so for here i'm going straight down i'm not looking around but i'm listening for audio in case anyone's near me cut my parachute gonna get the lc 110 and i'm gonna get flying um i like to stay down a certain route when i'm running superstore you won't see me cut straight down the middle i'll either go on the left hand side or the right hand, or left hand side and the right hand side and move it that way so i want to pop daddy i either pop daddy when i'm about to engage in a fight or when there's another daddy there why because every time i get a kill with the dead silence i'm able to re-up on that daddy because every kill you get re's up or i'll pop a daddy when i see a daddy and if i don't get any kills all i have to do is relap on where the old daddy was and keep moving so I'm going to pop that. That's going to cue the dead silence. I'm going to see another guy here. And notice how I'm going to get this kill right here. Notice my shots for a second. This is very important. Notice my shots for a second. At certain distances with an SMG, it's going to be very hard to lock onto the head and get strictly headshots. But as I'm shooting, you guys are going to notice my recoil. I start around the chest area. And then from there, I start working my way up. Because even if I get one headshot, that's a second or two faster uh, of that per person dying. So I start at the chest, I end off the head, get, get a couple headshots on him, and it speeds up the process a lot faster. Now my dead and read up. So instead of going back and waiting for that, I'm going to just keep pushing, playing a fast tempo, clearing out Super Sword is going to help you guys get more kills. Get the bounty, pick it up just in case it gets poached. I, I see that decoy popped up and I see a red dot. I'm going to jump up just to scan the area, don't see anything. This guy right here. Gonna go for that. Turn around quickly because I heard someone behind me. Good shots there. Now, notice this. I have four shots. I can't take the fight. This guy's playing very aggro, but I need to not show any weakness or any sign of defense while I'm engaging this fight because I got to make sure he stays his distance active as if I have a million bullets. I love that about you. So, I'm kind of playing this. Reloading, not giving him, you know, too much breathing room, but just enough that I could get a good reloaded. I'm going to go ahead and push this. And boom, gonna get a kill. Something I, I talk about right now, you hear me, and I'll explain to you what I'm talking about. When players go for an ego chow and they re-challenge you, I would rather me personally die to somebody who isn't afraid to die and, you know, goes for a little bit of ego chow than someone camping in the corner. All right, I'm gonna push this way. And notice how I'm just going through Superstore and I'm going through the same route. I'm kind of staying within the same route because if I start running cross Superstore, and this should be at any location, if you try to clear too much ground at once, I'm most likely gonna miss somebody and get shot in the back. I see a player right there. Boom, going for the headshots. Maybe a little bit too far to the left. I missed the first couple of bullets and then recentering myself onto their head. The faster you get those headshots landed, the faster you're going to kill that player. Four kills, 120 up, 28 up. Not bad. Another player in front of me. Let's see how I can do. Boom, same thing. Start with the chest, move up to their head. Faster killing them, faster gameplay, more kills. And you think, oh, you know, it's not going to matter too much. It's not going to help that much. It will. The more you do that, the more likely you are, instead of starting with the chest, you're just going to automatically hit the headshots. And you're going to have a lot more kills that you were like, wait, I killed that? Now, little tip for real quick. I get dead silence or I have um, a loadout. I can easily throw it towards Superstar, get it in a circle to bounty. But I got to play fast. So throwing that loadout near that bounty, using the, the box as cover, and then using that to also stick the fight is important. 
I miss the stopping power. <laughs> now, this is a little bit more of a snap. There's no live commentary in this, and maybe for the next couple kills. But I can maybe talk about center in here. Boom. So I see him here. I'm, as I'm playing the game, I usually do live commentary, so I'm not as completely focused. But I see the player to the right. I have the bullfrog in. What's going to do more damage? If I hit a lucky snipe, that's basically going to have him, hey, back off. Or do I go for the bullfrog shots and try to win a 50-50, even though he had first shot? So I'm going to switch to that really, really fast. Go for sniper. Break his armor. Now we're in even playing fields. He had the first shot, but because the sniper does so much damage, now I have a little bit of a second or two uh, uh, step ahead. Then switch to the bullfrog and just pre-fire. The bullfrog has a good amount of ammo. It's one guy. He's weak. If he goes for the reach out, he'll walk in my bullets. He goes for the reach out because he knows he broke my armor. He's going to die there. Get shot in the back. Want to go ahead and back off that. Going to get clustered. Player in front of me as well. Now let this play out. Um, but right now, all I'm doing is... Actually, I won't, I'll talk over it. All I'm right now doing is looking for an opening and then engaging. So I don't have full plates left, but I'm saying that aggro. Once I get underneath him, I'm going to throw a nade. That's going to do enough damage. So now that's my opening where I can pop an armor, push up, push up with the bullfrog, break his armor, go for the snipe, down him. Now, that combo right there between, you know, going with the snipe and then bullfrog, that was something more flashy than it was necessary. Um, once you break armor, depending on your HP, your ego should be a little bit more higher. Again, don't challenge something stupid. Because if you do that, you change that, you know, 80-20 fight to a 50-50. But, you know, again, a little flashy. Player behind me, going to go ahead, circle all the way around. Notice I'm not going to repeat the same area. I could got behind cover and do the right-hand peek. But if you play fast enough, your reach outs are going to be your best friend if you reposition with the reach out. And get the headshot on that. Eight kills down, 97 up. I got to pick up the pace and keep flying. Notice I'm going to circle back to the, uh, the buy station to recycle those UAVs. Now, I'm gonna break armor, gonna go for wall bank shots, but I'm not gonna go and just beeline this kill because yes, I'll probably get the kill because he's so weak, but I'm gonna waste more time because I'll get the kill, I'll have to come back at a UAV and, and you lose time. So think, all right, what's my prioritization right now? Get a UAV, go kill him or go kill him, then get a UAV. What's gonna waste more time? So I'll let this play out and this is me just kind of playing this fight and we'll come back again with uh, you know a little mid-game live commentary. Dang it, oh my God. Ah, this guy's not bad. We need recon here. UAV entering the AO. You go fly towards that, try to put him down. Whatever. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. Stopping power should hit. Help me. Let's keep moving. Go there, replenish armor. Too bad. Be advised, UAV is bingo fuel. RTB for resupply. You guys saw Gooch, right, chat? I get another UAV and keep going. So this fight I'm about to show you guys is probably one of the longest fights I had up until end game. This player had the high ground on me and it was all about creating an opening. I break his armor, I'm able to push up. But I know by the time I get to the position where I need to be, which is going up the stairs, he's gonna be replenished HP and expecting to push. And it's a downwards hallway that I gotta push up. 
So I need to be careful on how I play that. It's about, you know, yes, play at a fast tempo, but no one to slow it down. Right here, I could easily take it a shot, but I'm not confident because the way he's jumping around. I'm gonna go ahead and push more into cover. He's gonna go for a repeat. Right here, I was having a little bit of trouble every time I went to shoot. I think because I was playing a little bit too fast. I was, you know, a little too anxious. And my gun kept, uh, I kept white wine. Um, but again, I'm looking for an opening. I have no, I have no shields right now either. So I got to play for that sniper pick. Because if I don't play for the sniper pick, it's going to be very difficult for to get this kill. Especially at this distance with the bullfrog. Going to get the knock. That's, now that is my cue to go. I have a knock. No, no, don't pop a shield. Don't reload any weapon. Fly. Because right now I have no shield. I need to make sure I get this kill. He's going to get back up. And he's going to be absolute. He's going to jump up top. See, if I wasted any second, he would have been in a better position. Going to go for that. Now I got dead silence. 17 kills with 44 players up. Keep up the tempo and keep flying. I'm also have a dead silence, which is basically a free kill. At least one guy, depending on how I use it. And I'm already looking for the next fight. Now watch this. I'm going to circle back. I have one armor. Do I invest my money? This is for you guys to think about. Is you know, uh, You'll see what I do. But I can either invest and buy shield because I only have one. I'm about to find another one. Or do I go for a UAV? Whether you have one shield, two shields, I actually go in after 100. But even if I didn't have any shields there, I already bought that UAV because just one shield is good enough rather than, you know, playing for your life. And maybe if I didn't have Gooch or maybe it was end game, I would have bought the shield. But because it's around mid game right now, second zone, 44 players up and I'm or 41 players up and I have a lot of kills. You got to prioritize going for those kills. Yes, your life's important. But if you're playing for your life off the rip of the game, you're not going to get those high kill games. Play for your life towards the end of the game or when you're on a decent burner and you need to, you know, slow down your tempo. Pop did it. Pop the daddy. Go ahead and push up this. Notice how I'm going for the wide slide cancels to re-challenge or to re-peak the little corners. That's where it's going to be. 18 kills, 35 players up, and it's all about moving. Pick up back the tempo. 18-35 against solos dies really fast. Around 20 people left, it'll slow down. But again, move, move, move. I gotta find a bounty. When in doubt, man, if you have nothing on your radar, you don't have enough money for a UAV, you need to pick up those bounties. That's a guaranteed person. That's pretty much a UAV, a personal UAV on a player, especially in solo, it's so hard. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this up. Now, looking at this, listen to the audio on this. I pick it up, it's near the buy station. I'm also gonna hear a UAV pop. Now, sometimes a bounty could be glitch, you know, it's a little bit delayed or so forth. But when I hear UAV or enemy UAV, I don't know if I heard this before, I'm about to hear it. That's going to pretty much confirm because that announcer only comes into your ear once you are um, if in a, a proximity of that UAV being popped. So with all the buy stations here, that's the best opportunity where he may be. I'm going to go ahead and push this. I'm looking for him. Boom, enemy UAV. I'm now going to fully commit to this spot. I haven't seen him yet. I think I see him just right now. But I'm going to fully commit to this spot now and go for this kill. He's going to also be looking my way. Going to go for an easy snipe kill. 20 now with 25 up. I have the bounty money, so I have another UAV, two UAVs technically, because I pop and get another one. And I have an ATV on the left-hand side if I want to take that. Also using vehicles to your advantage. Now, I always talk about how a car or an ATV or a helicopter, whatever it be, is very important for going for high kill games because they allow you to play at a certain tempo that you can't normally play without the vehicles. But for me, most of my kills you notice are within the uh, Superstore and the factory area. This is where I'd say don't take a car because if you're fighting within one area because there's a lot of people, you don't need to take a car from one city to the next, boom, ba, boom. There's probably a car in the city you're going towards anyways. It's a little bit better to be incognito, you know, push up on players that maybe not know you're there. And, you know, instead of, hey, I'm here, look at me, I'm in a car pulling up, slow it down, go incognito, don't let them see you and get those kills. And sometimes and may be a lot faster than using the car. Wait a couple seconds, throw this now. As soon as he gets up. So here's a bit of a lesson that I learned. I don't know this area too well. I see this, uh, you know, Sun God, the guy's doing the recon. I know he's in this pocket. I don't know the entryways. So this is why it's important to know. I'm gonna go wide left-hand side and notice there's no entry way there. So he's gotta be on the right-hand side. So I already wasted enough time. He's probably gonna finish the recon, get better positioning. And now I'm gonna have to take a lot longer of a fight. Going to push this. Trigger discipline. 
I know me personally right now looking back at this, I know I'm not going to get the kill. No matter how good your shots are and at this distance, because the amount of time he's going to be that I'm able to shoot between him and the cover he's about to get into, there's no way I get this kill. But without having that trigger discipline, I'm going to shoot, give away my position, and now it, the fight's a lot harder. So boom, he's already in cover. Now I got to reposition. Only pull the trigger when you know you can guarantee the kill. Gonna go for the sniper. Break, not break, but I shot him now once with the bullfrog. I shot him with the sniper. He probably has just a small amount of HP left on his shield. Notice I'm gonna break it really fit, fast. Go for the headshots, um, because that's all I could see. Get the kill. 22 kills down with 14 players up. So I'm gonna head pop a shield. Notice as I'm popping shield, do I do it here? I'm running over the loot, and that what that's doing is I'm replenishing my shield as I'm healing up. So I'm always at that eight. That constant eight shield some people will like run over already have full shield not be sure uh full plate of themselves and just run away and heal up the more you do that the more your hp will start to tank your shield count will start to tank and you'll probably feel that within the third or fourth fight you take car pulling up here i'm not gonna take a shot trigger discipline right there i'm gonna peek right hand side nothing go ahead and peek the left hand side nothing he's now got to be committed to either up top or the right hand side he didn't do a delay push on the left Boom, he did a delay push on the right hand side. Good shots on that, he breaks my armor. Now I have to be careful. I wanna be sure to get out of his LOS. If I don't see him within this angle right now, he's going for the challenge on the left hand side. That's gonna give me enough time. He might get a, maybe a shot army or two, but to find a different position. Boom, backing up, getting out of his LOS, right? Going to the truck and boom. He went on left hand side, he ended up pushing up. A player won't reach out of the same spot. If it takes one or two seconds, a little bit longer, he could easily win for the right-hand side. Ego Child maybe even killed me. But because he didn't child there and I waited for a second or two, I know for 100% he's going left-hand side. They're playing fast. It's just about finding which way they're going, left or right. Go for the miss a sniper shot on that. I'm gonna back up again. Notice how I'm repositioning every time. Because now it takes him a second to look. He's not there anymore. Oh, just a second to the right. His crosshairs have to take a little bit of a second to go and find me and shoot me. Boom. Gonna go for the jump shot. Break his armor. I broke his armor. I still have armor in himself. I can go for the reach out. Again, watch my repositioning on this. All the way right hand side. Get the kill. GG. 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 Move on. Let's keep going. And right now, I could circle back. There, look, take a look at this now. There's about 10 players left. I, I got to kill over half the lobby to get that 30 bomb. I could either A, waste a little bit of time and go pop my UV, buy another one just so I have one in my back pocket or just rush this bounty. Now this bounty is confirmed kill and because there's so little people left in the lobby, there's probably a buy station in this area. I just need to fly. So that's what I'm gonna do. Pop a UV and I'm gonna keep going. This lobby got towards. So right about here, even to the end, I'm still cycling bounties as much as I can because that's a guaranteed player in which there's seven players left. I need to kill six of those players to get that 30 bomb. Now, again, I'm going to relap on what I did uh, before. When you're in a fight and you're the one who gets shot at first, the fastest thing you can do is either A, move around, dodge bullets, and then, you know, go for a shot with whatever gun you're holding, or B, if you have a sniper or a high TTK weapon like an AMAX, try to re-challenge and just hit the headshot. You need to put yourself at an advantage because already getting shot at once, you're at a disadvantage. So I'm going to show a mix of those two. I have a sniper in hand. Full frog. I get shot at. He will 100% land a bullet on me first before I can, you know, land a shot on him. So I'm going to switch to the sniper and I'm going to throw the combo in now with the sniper and the movement to help, you know, delay the time to kill on his part as well as trying to get that cheeky one shot on him. I go forward. I bring it back before centering. I bring my body backwards. Then I go for the center. Go for the down. Still moving. Notice how I wasn't even complete with my move yet nor, nor my slide cancel. I backed it up. Didn't worry about position. Sway to the right, sway back to the left, hit the down, and then I continue sliding. Notice, I'm still going left to right. That's just kind of the after effect of moving so fast. Gonna get the full kill on that. 25 kills down, and then we gotta pick it up. I got five, I need to get five kills with seven players. Let's see if I can do it. Now, right here, this player's gonna come back from the googe, whether he won it or not, ended up closing, I'm not too sure, and land back on his loot. Now, either A, I let him get on his loot, recover, Possibly get ghost, lose track of him, and he dies to another player. Or one, I just confirmed this one kill, putting me at 26, and then I could play the whole rest side of the map without worrying about it. I'm gonna push up the bullfrog. Watch my centering. Now, centering is very important. I haven't talked about too much. Well, a little bit, but look at my crosshairs. 
your crosshairs should be positioned where the player might be peeking out the first. If, if some players like to look, you know, a little too, too down, too up, too left, too right. And what happens is when a player actually walks in your crosshair, the first thing you do is you probably either shoot or aim down sight. You don't worry about the centering. Um, so as you aim down sight and shoot, you now have to reposition your wasting bullets, find your crosshair and then shoot. For me, I like to have my centering on point because that helps increase the TTK on any weapon you use. So now look at it where it's at even right now. If this player repeats the right hand side of this play and I already have my crosshairs on there. Boom, he popped out through here. Notice where my crosshairs are leading now, right here. I can easily aim down and shoot. Now I'm just gonna miss it by a second. Right here, as I slide, notice how I'm sliding and clearing this whole area out because of the angle I'm going in. Boom, slide. Look how close my crosshair is now. Hugging tight, hugging tight. Already here. You know, I could have either looked left, ran, then turned right. That's called a snap. But unless you know you play at a high sense or you're more of an experienced player, it's not going to look good. Do damage. Back up. Go. Now I go in for the movement. Now I go for the movement because he's already going to be pre aiming this. Try to dodge a couple of his bullets and go for the full kill. Jump out. Don't see him there. I'm going to get a little bit more sprinting speed on that. And so I'm not just standing too still. I'm able to get a little bit of a, a slide there or a little crouch there. Jump back to the right hand side. Now he's got a, his tracking's a little bit off. I'm gonna walk into a couple shots, break his armor, kill him, and he just did a slither of HP. Keep it moving, fast tempo. I gotta kill everybody for the slurry bomb. Mark target for airstrike. This is tracking three one. Good job. Flash. Good kill. Wish I had another for you, baby. Now, these last two kills are very important. I'm not going to talk too much about them. But what I'm doing is I'll let you, you know, rest the game play out. This is for the 30 bomb. I'm playing my position as a choke point. If you don't know what a choke point is, basically, you know, I'm playing that chance that the zone might pull to me. You could use a choke point when the zone's already pulled on you and the player's outside of the zone. And they have to rotate towards me with little cover. I have enough cover. I could easily fly towards players. Uh, you'll see within this fight and the next fight, I can easily fly towards them. But if you play a little bit slower, slow down that tempo, you're almost guaranteed that kill. Make sure they play uh, within your speed and your tempo. If you're playing at another player's tempo or another enemy's tempo, that's most likely the best for game lose fight. So watch how I play these last two kills by positioning, um, you know, going from fast to slow, whatever it may be. And let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoy these style of videos, let me know. And uh, hey, GG's, we'll move on to the next game. I think I should be in the hill. I just hope he doesn't have a sniper. I think it's best if I clear all the way left first. I gotta go tree to tree though. 